Hey everybody, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. This is Kana's Corner, and I have a very special guest with me in the corner. And thank you so much for being on the show, Laura Summer. Well, hi Jackie, and hello listeners. How's everybody doing today? I think they're really happy because they get to listen to an interview with you, and I think that's awesome. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> but we'll have some fun. Now, I do want to say you've been in the voice acting industry for, for quite a while, and you've gotten to see sort of the changes from, you know, back in the 80s to now. Is there a huge difference? Well, I didn't. I started acting in the 80s, but I didn't really do voiceovers till well, I just did some radio and uh, TV voiceovers maybe in the late 80s, and um, that was in New York. And when I came um, out here to Los Angeles, where I am now, um, I did a different kind of work, Uh, not as much commercials and radio spots, but more like looping, what they call looping or additional dialogue replacement on uh, feature films. And, um, of course, now with the Internet, there's a lot of changes in the voiceover industry and video games and all sorts of things like that that people can get into. I heard actually you can start, you know, sending auditions and things at home now if you have the equipment. I've heard that too. No, <laughs> it is true. That is true. A lot of people do that, and uh, some people have agents around the country. Um, I have heard, though, that if you have an agent in L.A. or New York, you're pretty much represented for around the country. I don't know. You know, you hear a lot of different things from different people, So, but many, many people have home studios. And that started so they wouldn't have to drive all the way to their agent's office and, you know, spend an hour driving there, doing the audition, sitting, waiting to go in, doing the audition, and driving all the way back in traffic. It's pretty brutal here in L.A. And so it started that way with the home studio. But now so many people, and it's so inexpensive to have your, you know, home equipment that um, you really don't have to live, apparently, in the major markets. Yeah, and I, I personally wouldn't want to live in L.A. I'm in, I'm in Vegas, by the way, Vegas, Nevada. But L.A. has some terrible traffic. We we go there for cons quite often, and it's just like we get ran over almost all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Now, you come, you come here for the con, or you, you go to San Diego? Um, we generally go uh-huh. to Los Angeles for Anime okay. Expo. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, that one. Yes. I've heard of that. I've never been. I've been to the... The, the big one, the Comic-Con in uh, San Diego, and I've done some panels there. But that's, that is huge, and so thousands and thousands of people come. Oh, it's amazing, the, the fan base for that sort of thing. It's just like a stampede. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear it's already sold out. Uh, you know, for the uh, four-day passes, maybe you can get a one-day pass. I'm sure you can buy a pass on eBay or Craigslist or something, but, you know, it's really popular. People say that the uh, that the fan base has outgrown the venue. Oh, yeah, definitely. And now I'm curious, when it comes to anime, do you remember what was your very first animated series? Yes, uh, let's see. I didn't even know what anime was, and I went to visit a friend who was doing a show, and she introduced me to a lovely woman named Rita, and Rita's last name, she has a different last name. She's a producer at Storyopolis, and um, she said, why don't you read this? And she asked me to read something, and it was, a, and I got, she said, okay, you're going to do it. And it turned out to be a series called Super Pig that, uh, I don't know, we made a lot of episodes. I want to say, like, 70 episodes, but it never aired. <laughs> and but And let me tell the viewer, the uh, listeners, keep saying viewers, the listeners, that it doesn't usually work like that, where they turn to you and say, okay, are you going to do the job? Um, But in that case, it just sort of, I was in the right place at the right time, and uh, I guess Super Big never aired because when I think Saban was sold or bought by Disney or something like that, anyway, they didn't like the idea of a a superhero being a a girl who turned into a pig. Somehow lost something in the Japanese translation of the original series. But it was very cute. So that was my first uh, 
entree into anime. And once you knew what it was, did you try and pursue it a bit more, or did you kind of use your connections at Studiopolis? <laughs> Uh, well, Studiopolis, I think, uh, is, is, is in business now. It wasn't in business then. It, uh, it was all these shows were coming out of Saban um, at the time. And um, uh, I had done original animation before I ever did anime, and it's completely different when you just do, you sit around at the mic and you perform, and then the uh, anime, which you're focusing on, is you have to sync to the uh, picture. So it's actually harder uh, to do and if you've never done it. Um, it's definitely a skill, and speed is of the utmost importance. Yeah, I definitely hear that quite often dubbing is a lot harder and, for whatever reason, pays less. I'm sorry? I, 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 I hear quite often that dubbing is a lot more difficult, but for whatever it, reason, it pays less. <laughs> Oh, yes, it pays much, much less. It's an hourly fee, no residuals, flat rate. Um, I mean, I only work union jobs, but uh, I think you can even get non-union jobs that maybe match the pay rate, and um, the pay rate is not – I mean, it's good It's compared to, let's say, um, working in a department store or something, <laughs> but compared to, uh, you know, the, the fact that there's no residuals, that's a big deal. Oh, definitely, and I would think that it'd be a uh, very hard, uh, you know, today to do it because of the economy and everything. But you know, there was a, I guess, sort of anime boom in the early 2000s where uh, it was becoming like a big mainstream thing. Did you notice that? Uh, you mean like with Digimon and Pokemon and all that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, I was on Digimon, so I was very aware of that and uh, the success. Um, I, I think Poke, I don't I think Pokemon was Pokemon was done somewhere else, but Digimon was done here in LA, and I I was on it for a few years, and it seemed like sort of the thing to do, and there were so many great people on the show, and then we did a movie, and um, yeah, it seemed very mainstream. And was that show a lot of fun? I, I remember you were sort of like a flying pig creature, I guess you could call That's it. That's right. Yeah, like a, I guess the pig thing kind of follows me. Uh, it wasn't really a pig. It was like a flying kind of hamster and um, that, you know, morphed into a superhero, uh, Pokemon. And um, I actually, uh, it's funny, I, uh, a friend of mine, Yuri, uh, oh, God, Yuri's last name, Lowenthal, Oh, yeah. Uh, who you might, you, probably your fans know. He has a book out, a voiceover book, and um, I wrote a story that's in there about being in Italy and seeing my doll that I had, that was made into a toy of, of uh, from Digimon, the uh, creature Potamon, and uh, so the story is kind of about how I was so excited to see the, the uh the, the toy, and when I got back to the States, I put some batteries in, and it wasn't my voice. It was dubbed in Italian. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> and there was a definite, there was a doll, you know, with my voice, but not that was available in Europe. So that was kind of fun. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. We're going to, <laughs> we're going to take a very short break here on 91.8 The Fan, but stay tuned to your favorite station. Everything you want, nothing you don't. This is DJ Connie here to tell you the best place for all you video game fanatics. All right, I'm listening. If you haven't head on over to your local game tag, you don't know what you're missing. Not only can you rent all of their used games, which is perfect if you're not sure what you're looking for, but you'll always be served by gamers just like yourself. What's not to love? Do I look like I have any interest in children? Now making them? Well, that's another story. Not only that, every game tag is located next to a Video HQ, where you can buy or rent your favorite anime on DVD or Blu-ray. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to GameTagStores.com or VideoHQStores.com. Make sure to tell them 91.8 The Fan sent ya.
Hey, everybody, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. I still have my special guest here, Laura Summer, and I didn't scare her off. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did. I, I am curious, though, I know that you also do a lot of live action sort of voiceover in, in with the looping and whatnot. Can you explain a little bit about that? Uh, well, what looping is, is officially called additional dialogue replacement, and that's when um, you're watching a movie, let's say, and you're seeing Meryl Streep talking to Al Pacino over dinner, and then you see people at other tables having their animated conversations. Those voices have to be put in and layered in in post-production. So actors are hired to do that. And that's kind, and that's part of it. And then, or maybe you'll see a crowd of people um, clapping and screaming, and there's a close-up on a girl with her mouth open, and you have there has to be sound put in. Let's say she's screaming at a football game, so that would be another thing. Or maybe um, it was a day player hired for the day and had a line or two, and they didn't like how uh, the acting was or the sound was muffled. They might not get the same actor back. They would have um, this small group. It's done in a group of people. It could be like four people the group might be, or it could be 20 people um, looping for that day. And they would have, they would pick someone who they thought was the best voice match for that and replace the dialogue. And so it's a process. It's done, you know, uh, for the day. Sometimes you might have a job and it's a few days, but that's rare. But um, uh, every movie has post-production uh, additional dialogue replacement, which is also called looping. Every movie does, and um, a lot of television shows as well. I would assume that'd be actually pretty hard to match the lip sync of, of, you know, like a normal person. What do you mean? Just, you know, it, it's it, animation. They have the lip flaps, but there's so much difference in, you know, humans. They have so many characteristics. I would think it'd be a little bit harder to match a lip flaps of, you know, a human and not somebody who, uh, you know, was animated. <laughs> oh, it's actually, I think it's easier the other way around because when I first saw, you know, when I got hired for Super Pig and I, they said, you know, match the flaps. I thought that was so weird because it's just up, down, up, you know, it's open, close, open, close. It's not words. And, you know, um, I know that some people think, like, with uh, ADR, they tell you what to say. Well, they don't tell you what to say. Let's say you see somebody at a table and they're ordering, they're telling the waiter what they want. You don't know what they said. It would be like, oh, I'd like the salad with the chicken breast. Because you just have to figure out what would fit, you know. Oh, I see. Um, you see? And sometimes things fit, and sometimes they don't. And sometimes, oh, no, this will work better. And um, everyone is pretty supportive usually and tries to help the person who's at the mic, you know, if it doesn't fit or they need it shorter or quicker or, you know, just different or lower or higher if the voice doesn't sound like it's, you know, went quite what they want. That's pretty yeah, interesting. They might have somebody actually. else do it. Yeah, like, yeah, it I, is interesting. I've never known about that portion. You know, I get to hear about uh, other aspects of it, but I never have gotten to hear sort of, you know, the the extra stuff, which really, when you think about it, it helps make a movie too. Oh yeah, because it could really, if you're watching some kind of competitive sport and you don't hear the people in the background screaming or chanting or calling out the names of the players you know, or the team or something, think of how dry that would be if you were watching the movie. It wouldn't be very exciting, you know? Oh, definitely. And I'm curious, do you have any upcoming projects or projects that you've recently finished that you can tell our listeners about? Well, I looped the uh, show for uh, ABC Family called Make It or Break It, and that's coming back for another season. Um, and there's taping now. And I'm not exactly sure when that will be on the air, but soon. That's about uh, um, high school girls who are hopefuls for the uh, Olympics um, in gymnastics. And it's a really fun show. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm sorry. That was yeah. our that was our recorder. <laughs> it, it went off. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, the Garfield, show, the Garfield show is a lot of fun. 
It sounds like it, and it sounds like you really enjoyed the show yourself. And I'm curious, is there anything else you want to tell the listeners out there? I, well, if you're uh, – are these a lot of fans who want to try to get into voiceovers or just fans of animation and anime? Um, most of our, our fans are, are – most of our listeners are people who really respect, you know, the, the dubbing process. I don't know how many of them want to get into voiceover. I know right now it's it's really hard with the economy, though. Yeah, well, you know, everything is, so you might as well try to do what you really – what you think you'll love. So I don't discourage anyone from trying, you know, living out their dream and going for it because, you know, you could be an accountant and lose your job. You know, so we might as well do something that can be really fun and, um, you know, not that, you know, I'm looking for more competition, <laughs> but <laughs> we, we're, we're very happy that the fans are out there, you know, very, very happy about that because that's what keeps us working and it's so wonderful to be appreciated. Oh, definitely, and I agree, and I, I must say that I really appreciate you coming on the show today and giving a little insight into what you do. Oh, you're so welcome. And I was wondering, before we let you go, if you'd like to participate in a 91.8 The Fan Tradition. What would that be, Jackie? Well, we ask everybody who comes on, whether they're a voice actor or not, if they'd be willing to say a certain line for us, a.k.a. Sure. do a bump for us. Sure. Uh, we, we do this live on air, so if you mess up, everybody gets to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> but we were wondering if you could say, my name is, I do this, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Oh, I might have to write this down. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> um, okay, my name is, what's the other one? I do this, and you can put that in, you know, looping, voiceover, say a certain character, whatever it is that you want to do there. And then you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. And would that be your or you are? <laughs> you can say either are. Uh, we we, we okay. mostly say you're tuned into, but ever, either one works. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, everybody's always going, you are, and it's you are apostrophe R-E. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm ready to go. All right, whenever you're ready. My name is Laura Summer. I am an actress and do voiceovers, and you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. Perfect. No mess-ups. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for that. I, we really appreciated you ha having you on the show. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. And for everybody out there, if you missed any of this, shame on you. Stop doing that. you got to listen. And we'll post the interview up on 918fan.com in the next few days. So keep tuned to your favorite station, everything you want, nothing you don't. Here's Ayami Hamasaki and her song, Microphone.